Hello, everyone. This is Yami Eccles Erwin from FilmFestivalCircuit.com and the assistant director of the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. Right now, we're gearing up for our fall 2023 screening, which is going to take place on October 7th at the Sunshine Mill Winery and Drive-In Theater. Uh, and today, I'm talking with one of our participating filmmakers. Kelly Krause is the producer, writer, and director of Storage. Kelly, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Zayami. Uh, so Storage is an incredible film. It's so uh, psychologically jarring. It's got a great narrative, great acting. Tell me, what inspired you to make this film? Well, first and foremost, I just wanted something of mine out in the world. Um, okay. I, you know, I had been dabbling in screenwriting for the past few years, and that was like really my entry into the film industry. Um, you know, but the problem with screenwriting is that you're constantly waiting for other people to give you the green light right. <laughs> on your project. So I finally just said, well, I'm just, I'm going to give myself the green light. <laughs> and, um, you know, I didn't have any immediate inspiration for the story. I just knew that I wanted to make something. And so the first thing that I did was make a list of all the resources that were already available to me. And one of those resources was the basement in the building that my husband and I live in. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just, as soon as I thought of that, um, I, I just, I, I realized I can't not make a horror film in totally. that basement. <laughs> I mean, it just has the best patina to it. Uh, you know, it's perfect for a genre film. Um, and so I wrote the script around that, uh, but the emotional core of it definitely came from my family um, and my friends uh, came up. Oh, sorry, I think my husband's coming home. I apologize for any noise. No um, but, uh, you know, specifically my brother, uh, he lost his partner to cancer, unfortunately. And um, a big part of the element with storage of going through her things came from his grieving experience. And also from our dear friend who lives across the hall from us, uh, who also lost his wife to cancer and um, a similar though different experience with her belongings uh, where he, to this day, and this, this has been years now to this day, still has everything of hers, mm. he hasn't given anything away. And, you know, so for me, like, like the, the connection that we just, have with things with people's things and, and reluctance to part with those things was just something that I really wanted to explore and I think in a way with my brother's situation especially kind of process my own grief in that situation hmm. so sorry that was a very long-winded answer <laughs> no, that's great well it's very interesting there's a lot going on there and, and I love this idea that the the kind of the objects carry a certain psychology a certain energy uh, and you know you kind of highlight that uh, there's a scene where he's He's looking at the stain and he's kind of lovingly feeling it. And um, I don't know, I felt like a little uh, attention to detail like that is really nice. I'm curious, though, um, you know, you're, you're sort of pulling from real life situations, stuff that has affected you, too. What is it like uh, writing from a sort of personal standpoint? Is it, is it challenging? Is there a balance that needs to be taken? What do you think? Um, I personally really enjoy it. Um, I'm currently tossing around an idea that's um, based off my grandmother's life as a young woman. She grew up biracial. Mm. Um, you want to know it looking at me? Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of family history there that sadly was lost because mm. of that, because of her experience um, as a young woman and because, and likewise because of her father's experience as a person of color um growing up in the late 19th and early 20th century and it's something that's really impacted my family and so kind of tying that into storage a bit with that that familial aspect that personal aspect i think there is something cathartic about it and uh storage of course leans darker it's not the happiest right. of endings <laughs> but um I, I think there is opportunity there to also kind of create the endings that we want to see or the endings that we didn't get in our lives and there's hopefully again some catharsis there um or you know something that enables us to kind of develop a different perspective on a personal experience or to work through it totally well i love that and it's cool that that's a theme that you seem to be kind of sticking with and, and meditating and exploring even in, in uh, further works um, 
let's talk a little bit about the, the kind of the design and atmosphere of this film. You know, the, the story is non-dialogue and uh, I can't believe that that's just your uh, apartment's um, storage unit because it looks, <laughs> so, I mean, you, you definitely did some set decoration. I mean, it looks, it looks so spooky. Let me just say that. We, we did very little, really? to be honest. Um, <laughs> that so much of what you see is just, again, the natural patina and okay. uh, the elevator as well. The elevator is the original elevator. So that elevator is also 112 years old and is still so operating. Scary. And, you know, that <laughs> it has a lot of great sound patina as well. That right. elevator. <laughs> Um, and honestly, I think what took it over the top as far as the atmosphere was the lighting that was done by Elle Schneider, mm -hmm. IDP. I was just so lucky to have her on set, um, you know, beyond the great lighting that she came up with for that. Um, but, you know, she she worked with our close friend um, who chose to remain anonymous on this project. Uh, he he is a man, and he knew this was very much a women led project. Mm, he wanted okay. all the women on, on the project to to get the credit. Um, but he did a lot of on set work for us. You know, to kind of give the basement those final eerie touches okay. and, and, to, and to touch a couple things up that maybe we you know didn't necessarily want in the shot right. and made them disappear. And, you know, he was great um, helping my VFX supervisor, Elena Scott, on set with the practical elements as well. So, well, really, the, the effect is incredible. And you can feel just the thickness of the atmosphere. And you know, from the, the first frame that, the, that something's something bad is cooking. Um, what was it like working with an actor in a scenario that's largely non dialogue? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, funnily enough, um, the actor is my husband. <laughs> oh, OK. Wow. <laughs> and, um, you know, this was my very first film um i don't have a formal background in filmmaking and so i was trying to ease myself into the director's chair by streamlining as much as possible and so part of that process of course was deciding to film in the basement and write the script around it because right. you know we didn't have to do a permit or anything like that we just had to film in quote unquote off hours <laughs> and you know no dialogue was another aspect of streamlining that because dialogue is difficult to film and it's time right. consuming and expensive to film and so kind of knowing that i just needed somebody who was very expressive without speaking and who could emote, you know, very well without speaking was kind of was really all I needed. And that is my husband. He does have some background in musical theater. He did okay. that, you know, through school and, and through college, um, even though that's never what he did professionally. And um, I, I, know, I just I just knew he could do it. And he thankfully was up for doing it. And I'm I, I'm personally very proud of him. I, I feel he did an excellent job. Absolutely. No, it really, it really helps to convey that narrative without dialogue, just to see his emotions change. And I feel like, uh, yeah, really incredible job. I would have uh, completely bet that he was just uh, a professional actor that you hired on. <laughs> Everybody on set thought he was professional. <laughs> <They were> like, <laughs> <"No."> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, so tell me, what did you learn from this process? Oh my God, a lot. Um, you know, especially being the writer, director, and producer, I'm just, you constantly switching hats. And so I actually am thankful for that because I learned a little bit about everything. Um, you know, I think the greatest lesson that I learned is uh, to just trust the people that you've hired and to remember that you hired them for a reason. They are there to make your film better than you've ever imagined and just, just trust their expertise. Um, and the other big lesson that I learned uh, fairly early on, thanks to one of my sound mixers, Sara Taborga, um, is that you make three films. I think, you know, as screenwriters, it's very difficult to pull our faces from the page. Mm. We can easily get caught up in what is written on the page and it right. has to happen that way. And Sara was just fabulous at pulling my face off the page oh, and totally. reminding me that you make three films. The, the script is the first film. Then there's what you shoot. That's the second film. And everything that happens in post-production is the third film. And everything is going to build off the previous film and evolve. And the and that is how you get the final product, um, you know, or the fourth film, even if you will. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but that, that was an extremely valuable lesson, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the most important things to consider, especially in independent production. 
not only is there uh, lots of, you know, wearing different hats, but you have to really rely on your collaborators and you have to give a piece of it up uh, and just kind of, especially as, uh, you know, problems arise or schedules are, are tight. But, uh, uh, you know, I think that's kind of the, the magic and the beauty of independent cinema is this uh, greater collaboration that seems to be a necessity to get things done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, that was that was something that was very important to me on set was to feel that everybody could contribute. I, you know, I wanted to feel that people could just speak up if they totally. had a question, if they had ideas and, and to lend their ideas. And, and I made an effort to do that from the beginning. And I, I personally feel it shows in, in the final script. Um, by the time we had the final script ready, uh, everybody on the crew had contributed something to that script. And I'm very proud of that. You know, that that's awesome. Something of everybody in there. Yeah. Well, and, and the film, it feels so smooth. It feels so tight. I would never guess it as, as a, a debut uh, for you, but it, it just, yeah, it looks like a well-oiled machine process, something uh, very full and complete and very professional looking. So really excellent job on that. Thank you. I, I really appreciate hearing that. But yeah, just to hire people who are smarter and more talented than you. <laughs> Always a great <laughs> idea. Other big piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so tell me, what are you working on next? Do you, you have, uh, you were talking about that one uh, film idea. Is that going to be a short feature? Um, that would be a feature. Uh, okay. it, it is on the back burner right now. Okay. The, the, the project that I'm working on right now actually, um, is a feature length horror anthology. Oh, sweet. Um, so uh, uh, ambitious for sure, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that if I can, you know, produce like a bunch of little films with a lot of talented people, then I can hopefully produce a big film right. <laughs> after that. So, uh, that's going to be 2024. Um, I'm, you know, just kind of uh, ironing out the project proposal right now. Um, you know, having gotten some feedback on that, and then we'll start to approach a few filmmakers that I would like to work with. Whether or not they want to work with me is an entirely other question, <laughs> but you know, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. Well, I love that, and horror anthologies some of the best uh, some of the best format for for movies, in my opinion. It's just so fun and so cool to see different voices. So you'd be working with uh, different filmmakers. Everyone has a story in the anthology. Yes, exactly. Okay. So there's there's a central th uh, theme. Um, there will be a wraparound film to tie everything together. Ooh. That's the segment that I'm looking to direct. Uh, possibly a second one, although it, um, it, to be honest, it's all feeling a little ambitious right now. So we'll see <laughs> if I to do with an additional film totally. um, on top of the wraparound, but yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. You got the bug. You got the filmmaking bug. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, it seems it's like simultaneously the, the worst and best thing you'll ever do. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love it. You have great momentum, a lot of irons in the fire. And I'm really interested in um, uh, the other uh, idea you had as well. You said it was a perspective feature uh, highlighting your grandmother. Yes. Um, I, so I'm still trying to figure out what direction I want to go mm. in. Uh, right now, it's feeling like a mystery drama. Okay. Cool. Um, so uh, my, my grandmother um, was in, uh, again, she was mixed race. Um, so she was indigenous on mm. her father's side, my great grandfather. Um, but the, you know, kind of painful thing is, is that we don't know which tribe my grandfather mm. came from because it was something that was so taboo. You just didn't right. talk about it. So my, you know, and and my own grandmother didn't know her own grandmother's name, her own paternal grandmother's name. Mm. Like, like, you know, you just know nope, she's no longer part of the family sort of thing. And just, like her identity and her family's identity was just completely erased. Um, and my aunt has worked tirelessly to, you know, try to reclaim her name and her family's names, um, you know, and it's, Unfortunately, that, that's been a bit of a futile attempt. We've mm. the most she's been able to turn up is that she and her husband immigrated uh, from Canada. We think potentially the, the Vancouver area in mm. you know, the late 19th century. And, you know, she's just recorded as Indian woman. And that's it. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's it. Um, and so it's it's kind of. My my own grandmother didn't even talk about it for a very long time. Um, I, I didn't know that we had that ancestry. My mother didn't know that we had that ancestry wow. until I was a teenager and my grandmother was visiting and she started talking about it. And I can only think it's because she finally felt like she could mm. talk about it without it being taboo. Right. Um, and so, I, you know, my hope with this project is that... Um, 
you know, I, I can give my grandmother some catharsis, even though she has passed on, you know, through a story where she does find out who her grandmother's family is. And obviously, you know, that, that's creative license and everything, but right. yeah, you know, just, just to deliver like the, um, my grandmother's spirit, some catharsis and my great, great grandmother's spirit, some catharsis and, and my great grandfather as well, who, you know, sadly felt, or you maybe even was told that, right. Don't speak about this part of your family or family. So. Well, it's a very, it's a very uh, compelling story. And I love the idea that you're, you're, putting back this fractured identity, this lineage that wasn't allowed to, to exist. And, and you're kind of doing an alternate history where there is this sort of, I guess, a positive uh, identification. Yeah, um, that's, that, that's, that's the hope. That's the hope. Um, that's awesome. Like, so the, I, the, the plan for now, and again, still, still in the early stages, so it could change, but the plan for now is to actually name the character of my grandmother um, after my aunt, because my aunt is the one who's done all the legwork mm. for several years now, trying to retrace that, that, that part of the family. Um, you know, so this a little nod to her as well, and the part that she's played in all of this. And, you know, that when my grandmother found, found, finds out how, uh, who her grandmother is, she finds out they have the same name, and that she was actually named after her. So. Okay, I love that. Well, that's very <laughs> cool. I'm I'm super excited to uh, see these next couple projects uh, coming out. Is there anything else you'd like to add about storage? Oh gosh, um, I I don't know. I just uh, I'm I'm so glad that it resonated with the folks at Oregon Screams and with the folks at Film Festival Circuit, and I I hope it can resonate with many others. Um, and you know, that it'll, it'll have many opportunities to hopefully be seen. Absolutely. Well, it's a fantastic film. I cannot wait to screen it on October 7th at the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. It's going to be uh, in a drive-in, big outdoor screen in the Columbia Gorge. It's going to be so scary, so beautiful. And I think people are going to have a great time watching it. Absolutely. So, I'm very excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kelly, and uh, take care. Thank you, Zayami. You too. Bye. Bye.